Let's check in with a future winner of Celebrity Master Chef, the foodie footballer, Mark Pugh's with us. Hi, Mark. How are you? I'm really well, thank you. How about you? Yeah, I'm, I'm good, thanks. Are you finished? Uh, have you retired? So, yeah, I've retired. I'm still playing charity games, five a side, three times a week with my mates. I wanted to retire when I was still in great physical shape and I wanted to retire from the game rather than the game retire me. So, yeah. Um, and I've got another passion in life. So, yeah, um, officially retired. What, I, I, before we go on to, to talk about food, um, how do you look back on your career? You, you, it's, it's been fantastic, hasn't it? You, you must have no regrets. Yeah, it was a roller coaster ride. Um, been released from clubs twice, um, Burnley and Shrewsbury, and um, had to deal with, with a lot of setbacks. It was a roller coaster. Um, spent a lot of time in the lower leagues from up until the age of 24, 25. Got promoted to the Championship with Bournemouth, then to the Premier League. And yeah, I have no regrets. I give it my all. Um, and as long as you can look back with no regrets and say, look, I give everything for the cause and enjoyed the ride, then that's all I wanted. It's quite a special club, isn't it? The, the, you know, to be able to say, I, I, you didn't come through all the divisions with Bournemouth, but you came through that sort of, special time under Eddie Howe to get into the Premier League. Yeah, it was really special and what an amazing guy, amazing coach. He brought me on so much as a player. Um, his sessions he put on to be new, um, fresh ideas all the time. And uh, yeah, it was an amazing journey. We were sat, I think he was 21st in League One when he went away to Burnley and then came back. And then we went on a 20-plus unbeaten run to get promoted from League One to the Championship. And it was just surreal. It's everyone's dream to play in the Premier League, test yourself against the best in the world. And coming from where I was at, um, just absolute fairy tale. Loved it. What's his secret, Eddie Howe? What's, what is it? What's he got? Attention to detail, willingness to improve and develop young players. And he'd be the first in the door and last out the door. Um, you know, I'd stay behind one, two hours after training to put on extras for the for the lads, whether it be strikers, defenders, whatever it may be. And I think his belief in himself and his players, and he cares for people as well. He wants people to do well and be successful. Has he got a temper? Yeah. Oh, we've had some falling outs. <laughs> um, yeah, we've had some falling outs because I'm a winner. I've always been a winner. I want to win and. If training's not going my way and I've had an off day, I start to get frustrated. He'd get on my case. I'd have a little chirp back. But no, it was, it was all healthy. And I was one of these players that if I weren't performing, I needed a bit of a rollicking just to get me back on track. Some players need to have that arm around the shoulder. And he had that balance where he knew what each player needed. Well, listen, I mean, I was... I don't know whether I saw it on Instagram or LinkedIn or... The foodie footballer just popped up, and I'm like, right, Mark Pugh, this is this is interesting. So you're the foodie footballer. If anybody follows, follow him on Instagram, the foodie footballer. Why are you the foodie footballer? So when I was at QPR, I was 33 at the time, and decided to set up an Instagram page because at the age of 26, I um, started to develop a real passion for nutrition because I was I thought back, I was like, right, I've been promoted to the championship with Bournemouth. How can I gain that edge and how can I improve my performance on the pitch and help aid my recovery? So I did a diploma, 18 module diploma in nutrition and I looked into all the benefits food had on recovery and performance. So I started to take it really seriously. I was going from running eleven K in games to thirteen and sometimes close to fourteen K. I was feeling fitter, stronger, recovering better. So then I thought, rather than rely on the missus to cook everything for me, let's try and get involved in cooking. I couldn't boil an egg back then. Anyway, I started to get more confident and um, I started to put on some really good dishes. So at 33, like I just mentioned, set on my page as a foodie footballer and I wanted to encourage people with a healthier, happier lifestyle and help athletes reach their full potential. And now since retiring, that's all I want to do. I want to make the world a healthier, happier place. So how's it how's it been taken up? PFA, who's involved? I mean, I know you do, I know you do sort of like private, uh, you know, diet plans and whatever. But so in a way, it's come full circle because you've integrated your way back into football, haven't you? 
Yeah, I'm on the life skills program for the PFA. And what I do, I, I travel around the country for the 72 EFL clubs and put on presentations, which uh, is 40 minutes with Q, 40 minute with Q&A, um, along with a practical session as well. So we, we get hands on in the kitchen. I teach them how to prepare healthy pre and post match meals. And with my presentation, um, I include things such as healthy carb choices, proteins, fats, small percentages to gain an edge for an athlete. And yeah, I just really enjoy it. I love that environment of being in the football world and uh, dipping in and out. And I've got a little bit more flexibility to my life as well, which is amazing. And then I love doing corporate events as well because um, good nutrition is not just relevant for an athlete. It's universal. And I think to make the world a healthier, happier place, you've just got to get yourself out there and try and encourage people to, you know, focus on what they're putting in the body. What was your pre-match meal? Pretty Going much. back, when you started, be honest, when you started, when you first came in, and then how did that change to, say, you know, your later years? When I started, beans on toast. and <laughs> I wouldn't care what bread it was because I wasn't educated, didn't have a clue. And I felt okay up until 60, 70 minutes, and then I did a crash because I wasn't fueling properly. When I started to look into it more, my go-to pre-match was like a small piece of protein, either egg, salmon, or chicken along with quinoa, sweet potato, little some tomatoes, and then I top myself up with some um, brown sourdough with peanut butter and honey. Now, every individual is different. That might not work for, for everyone, but that works for me. And, um, you know, I wasn't one of these people that was superstitious. I didn't have the same pre-match every time. I'd sometimes mix it up and have dairy-free porridge with other bits and bobs, but for me, personally, I needed to get that between 90 grams and 120 grams of carbs in my body to fuel my performance. What were the lads saying? Come on, when you, when you were coming in with your quinoa, which, which I could imagine, they're like, what? What are you doing? I mean, did they take notice of you? Did they take the mickey out of you? What, what was the reaction? Half of them couldn't even see quinoa. They're like, we know. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, it was, uh, it was good fun. I mean, especially when I was having breakfast. I mean... They'd be looking at me. I'm like, what are you looking at? And it's like I'd have my, my sourdough toast with avocado, blueberries and raspberries on top of it. They're like, blueberries and raspberries with avocado? I said, yeah, you've got to try it. It's a great combination. So, yeah, I did get taken the mickey out of, but I loved it. I loved a bit of banter, and um, I knew it was helping me. So I think in, you know, with social media and everything now, um, there's a lot of um, people out there just to, you know, try and take the mick. But you've just got to take it with a pinch of salt and do what you believe in, and I believed in it. But at the same time as well, when they're saying, when you're, you, when you're clocking 12K, but then suddenly doing 14K, there must have been a buy-in from players, because you know, you know what they're like, they'll take anything that, that improves them. Yeah, we had a real good group of lads, to be honest, and especially when we got promoted to the championship and we had our chef, we had the food improved. I got a chef doing ginger shots for us in the morning, and everyone bought into that because... It's an absolute game changer when it comes to the immune system recovery. Um, everyone knows the benefits of ginger, turmeric, black pepper and lemon. And it's an absolute winner. And the lads were recovering better. We were all running more distance. I mean, our midfielders like Andrew Sermon, Harry Archer and Dan Gosling, they could run all day. And um, we had Matt Ritchie on one wing, me on the other. And that midfield, we could get up and down. And um, you've got to look after yourself. The game's evolving. People are getting more athletic and, you know, to test yourself against the best in the world, you've got to be on it at all times. I was reading your Instagram. I mean, I love my food. I'm a, I'm a foodie mad. The first thing I'll read is, you know, the restaurant reviews, the food sections of anything. I, I'm, I'm all over it. Watch all, every food show, I'm, I'm on it. So I'm looking at, you only eat red meat once a week, you say? Yeah, once a week, just to top my iron up, because when I was tested for um, deficiencies and I had my bloods done, iron was the only one that flagged up a little bit. So they just said include a little bit more red meat and have black tea as well. And you can get iron from spinach and cashews, but you don't get as much in it as red meat. So I include a little bit here and there. And it's like with everything, I believe moderation's key. You know, if you, if you go out for a meal, then enjoy a meal. But for 90% of the time, I'm good. That 10%, you're allowed a little bit of leeway. So um, getting the balance right is, is so important. Chicken mayo 
and nectarine skewers I saw you'd made. Was it, is it, I've written mayo, was it? No, mango, sorry. Chicken mango and nectarine skewers was one of yours. Uh, go on, tell, tell us one, one. One, they looked fantastic, I've got to say. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, so what I did, I, um, I just I bought a book called Science of Spice. And uh, it's just combining all different spices and um, chicken nectarines and mango. They go beautifully together. I mean, mango goes great in a salad as well with avocado or chicken, that kind of thing. So I thought, let's try and create a little marinade with a mango. So I created a marinade for it of, uh, with mango, chili, garlic, lime juice, peanut butter, a bit of everything, and uh, just coated the chicken in it. And then you can either stick it on the barbie or in the grill, and it comes out beautiful, really nice. I've also looked at your peanut butter cup. Oh, that's had a lot of good reviews. <laughs> yeah, they look that. fantastic. Go on, tell us, give us the uh, give us the rundown on that. Yeah, so the base layer is basically maple syrup, oats, and peanut butter, and then you whack it in the freezer, let that set, and in the meantime, just get your peanut butter, get a real good smooth one, and then once that's had fifteen minutes in the freezer. Stick the peanut butter layer on, stick it back in the freezer, and then when that's nice and um, nice and cold, you can melt your dark chocolate, place it on top, and they'll set beautifully in the fridge. And um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm working on a website at a minute that should be up and running within the next month, so all my recipes will be on there, so you'll be able to give that one a go, buddy. Absolutely. What about? I tell you what, I was talking to my wife about it, and 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 they they're really in, you know they're into the the healthy eating as well. Chocolate blueberry banana bread. Yeah, and it's all natural as well. I mean, a lot of banana breads, you get butter, sugar, flour, whereas in my banana bread, I use oats in replacement for the flour. In replacement for the sugar, I either use maple syrup or honey. And then I like to put banana in with a mixture, a little bit of baking powder, and then you've got your dark chocolate and a little bit of milk as well. It's so adaptable. You can put walnuts or different nuts in it as well. Just getting that consistency right with it. What's your guilty pleasure, food-wise? Oh, guilty pleasure. If I go out for a Sunday roast with a family and there's a sticky toffee pudding and custard on the menu, <laughs> <laughs> I, get, <laughs> I get sucked into that, to be fair, every now and again. But then um, the following day, I'll make sure I do an extra one or two K on my run. Do you cook? Do you do the cooking at home? I love doing the cooking because when I was uh, playing football, my uh, my wife, she's a, she's an amazing cook, but I began home and uh, she'd be making pies and, um, you know, hearty food and stuff, and it wasn't helping my recovery. So I thought, I'm going to have to take this seriously now, and uh, I like I like doing the cooking. I find it quite therapeutic as well and my way of switching off. What cooking shows do you watch, or do you watch them? Yeah, I mean, I love Jamie Oliver, Master Chef. Um, you know, Gordon Ramsay's brilliant. So I just would you go on Master Chef? Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent. That'd be right up my street. I'm telling you now, right there it is on Soccer X TV. Mark Pugh, get him on Master Chef. He'd be brilliant on it. Oh, that'd be quality. I'd, they'd probably be like, "What on earth's that?" When I'm cooking, because I won't be using butter. I won't be using sugar. So I try and. The thing is, the key is to make healthy, nutritious food delicious. And it's getting, we don't need to use all these horrible, you know, ingredients that are going to be detrimental to our health. It's just trying to get people to put the right things in the body and realize that eating healthily can be delicious as well. What kind of reaction do you get? Uh, do, do footballers contact you? Do athletes contact you? Uh, I mean, what's it been like? Yeah, it's been amazing. I mean, um, I think the um, the stigma around cooking is is being lifted slowly because back in the day, you know, ten fifteen years ago, it was it was weird for a man to be cooking, um, especially you know an athlete. They had a bit of banter, the players and stuff, but I absolutely love it. I encourage everyone else to to cook, and yeah, I get approached by athletes, you know, fifty year old men and women, and you know, I work with athletes you know, older women, older men, everything in between. And it's just, I get such enjoyment out of trying to help people become the healthiest version of themselves. So, um, again, whether your goal is to drop body fat, whether it's to um, improve lean muscle mass, whether it's to lose weight, whatever it may be, then 
I just enjoy that um, the process of trying to help people any way I can. Ladies and gentlemen, the foodie footballer, Mr. Mark Pugh. <laughs>